Kia ora, um, nā mihi nui, uh, kia koutou. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the uh, welcome we had from uh, Te Ariawa and the broad and uh, very encouraging overview from uh, Sir Rob Fenwick uh, earlier on. And thanks to Carolyn's overview for providing a basis for uh, th this presentation to dig down into participatory processes in action in our uh, marine spaces. A bit of scene setting though. Um, in the uh, 21st century, coastal nations and islands around the world have experienced a participatory turn directed to resolving contestation in and transboundary influences on multi-user, uh, multi-use marine spaces. Aotearoa, New Zealand, is no exception. Our marine spaces are volatile arenas of power and politics which challenge available regulatory governance and managerial models. We're acutely aware, for instance, of vexed land, coast, sea interactions, under development of the regulation for coast and sea relative to those for land resources, and the gradual intrusion of property rights and related expectations into the marine uh, realm. Our uh, marine spaces then are, are um, research settings of uh, considerable significance. What the slide shows is that we can think about social, political, economic, cultural and ecological processes in, in a range of ways and, and that the integration of different starting positions, perhaps the social, perhaps the ecological, are really quite central to how we proceed in, into making futures uh, for our marine spaces. Our research has involved an inventory uh, of the breadth of marine uh, participatory initiatives uh, in the country. Um, it's also had a look at um, 15 main participatory, uh, oops, back, uh, participatory uh, processes, and we've uh, undertaken 31 in-depth uh, in interviews across five highly innovative and illustrative participatory processes. The five uh, um, case studies uh, relate to um, Kaipara, um, Horeki Gulf, um, Te Korowai and Kaikoura, um, the interesting situation around deep sea mining and uh, the uh, uh, um, successful effort on the part of um, uh, a, a group to um, uh, publicly fundraise the purchase of land uh, um, for, um, the, uh, for a national park. What the, the slide here shows is that the, the kind of focus is not just spatial. It, it is that, that there are different uh, dimensions to what participatory processes are working on. In, in the case of um, the uh, Deep sea mining, it is about the processes of consenting uh, as, as a case in point. I'll do th uh, three things uh, this morning. Uh, introduce the main message, which is about enabling EBM through participatory uh, processes. Draw attention to the poster we prepared for today that we hope you will come and talk to us about. And highlight the part that participatory processes are the new normal in making uh, different marine futures. We hold that the uh, distinguishing feature of participatory processes is that they're about collectively navigating and negotiating socio-ecological visions and goals. The sort of multi-dimensional aspects that Carolyn introduced in, in her presentation. Our evidence from in-depth interviews and subsequent analysis strongly points to the joint generative effects of thinking differently, acting or doing differently, and practicing differently. This is a new uh, uh, challenge, one of a different kind of assembling work um, uh, for uh, the future. There is a repeated focus to this, 
trying to see and and create new possibilities and opportunities in, diff in the different links between economic activities and the environment. So we're centering something different, the, the links between economy and environment. The place-based and contingent nature of participatory processes in their context means there are no recipes, but there are some very important ingredients that can help EBM uh, ambitions. Our poster, which uh, a portion of which is shown here, has several features that we would stress. First, it centres outcomes as change or perhaps more pointedly um, transitions and, and processes um, and agency uh, as navigating and negotiating through participatory processes. So, so we are not looking for a static conclusion, but we are looking for ways in which everybody involved can, can um, help move uh, things forward for the marine space uh, or, that is of interest. Uh, our research highlights the intimate uh, ties between outcomes and processes, but does not privilege one over the other. Secondly, the poster is a composite window into some interrelated um, dimensions of how participatory uh, processes for EBM might be assembled. The interconnections are all part of stretching towards implementation. That's not foregone. It is about how do you create preconditions that will allow that uh, to move ahead. And finally, we would greatly value the chance to dialogue around the poster. There are, as I've said uh, earlier, many ingredients and um, the emphasis is that there are pivotal roles and impacts of bringing diverse knowledges and values into play. That, that's the focus with the shaded portion. Uh, and if that is done within participatory processes, then there is a securing of inputs from uh, and the actual presence of different voices which cannot be overemphasised. In the five case studies, we found efforts to uh, catalyse partnership relations between iwi and institutions, communities, businesses, publics and governmental institutions uh, was uh, almost always productive and offered ways to uh, enhance collective thinking. With this came often strenuous efforts to recalibrate and invent different practices uh, in the marine space. We have found that a key that's helped the assembling of uh, productive participatory processes has been um, uh, the, the um, development of co-leadership um, capacities and capabilities. And this, this uh, slide really uh, is, is aimed at highlighting the fact that co-leadership is manifold. Co-leadership can occur at any point, at any stage in a participatory process. Co-leadership involves external relations as well as it does internal relations. But what's important is that there's not a sudden lurch from one state to another. We are in a time of, and, and a world, where transitioning is a very central theme. As I move to a conclusion, I would like to pose the question, what is being achieved and how? I've got a set of uh, observations here which, which I think highlight uh, the kind of disposition that is important to achieving a, the direction of the sort that uh, Sir, uh, Rob Fenwick made reference to in his opening remarks. The first would be that the rel relative autonomy of the participatory processes in their marine space has meant that they've had considerable in independence and they've exercised this freedom in clever and constructive ways. But they do have an Achilles heel that, that has been that they are still ring-fenced and constrained by existing institutions, legislation, legal mandates, external pressures and so on. So our focus as a research object on participatory processes in marine spaces for EBM 
is, is one which has to be enlarged into wider sorts of conversations. Secondly, we know that the participatory processes, um, uh, the, the folk involved have had to think imaginatively about their collective focus, and this is pushed up against institutional and other power relations that inhibit collective thought and action. The worlds of governance and management in the spaces nowadays are quite different to what they were before the participatory processes um, uh, began to emerge. There is growing recognition that a fertile frontier is to engage um, in making futures by, a fo by focusing on values, means, ends, pathways that might already be in existence but aren't thought about in those terms and, and which also can become the, the object of uh, exploration and, and, test of, and testing for um, EBM uh, practice building. So to wrap it up, participatory processes have come of age. Their potency in configuring social gains in thinking, doing and developing practices contra to conventional norms is widely established. But as the case studies uh, attest, widespread and effective participatory processes rely on legislation and governmental mandating. And again, our, our board chair hinted at, at the importance of getting alignment between the, uh, what we're finding with respect to the marine spaces and, and, and what government may, may be thinking. To, to finally bring it to an end, uh, I have two messages. One, um, we'd be dead keen to talk to people individually and explore the poster information. And secondly, looking ahead, on the 28th of November in Hamilton, the Waikato Regional Council is hosting a workshop webinar on participatory process research implications. If you want more information on that, um, please contact Carolyn. This, this, this was a last minute request. Um, but uh, it, it's an opportunity to have wider uh, dialogue and engagement um, beyond what we've had here. Uh, thank you.